Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Naya Mirrorbox. Welcome back, everybody, to another standard gameplay video. Hope you guys are doing well today. I am just waking up and just getting started for the day, but I did want to go ahead and jump into this one because I'm pretty excited about this deck. Before we do that, though, I do want to just uh, go ahead and remind you, we do have our Dominaria United giveaway going on right now. We are giving away a free draft booster box of the set on September 16th to one lucky community member. One of the ways, the free ways you can enter is just subscribing to the channel. So if you are not already make sure you are subscribed now and that will enter you not only for this giveaway but also any future giveaways we do uh it's a free way to help support the channel as well so we really do appreciate it but let's talk about the deck so uh first and foremost this is a rotation proof version of the list now what that means is we had to sacrifice playing bard class uh, which is a really big piece of this deck. I think we're really lacking without it, but I still think there's something worth talking about here, which is why we're doing this deck. Uh, I would also venture to say that in the upcoming set, uh, Mirrorbox may become even better, given that we probably are going to be getting a lot of legendary things. Uh, and so, in my opinion, I'm just kind of curious to see where we start with this. Uh, not expecting this, again, to be good. I know that's kind of been the theme of the last week uh, that we're playing, you know, rotation proof decks which are naturally going to be more difficult to get successful wins out of uh, just because we're uh, literally limiting our card pool access but uh, also I think we're going to get a lot of new stuff in the new set for this deck uh, that that might change even the color scheme of the deck uh, now, as far as what we went for here, uh, definitely heavy on the three drop slot. So obviously for anybody that doesn't know, the mirror box card itself, the legend rule does not apply to permanence you control. Each legendary creature you control gets plus one plus one, and then each non-token creature you control gets plus one plus one. For each other creature, uh, you control with the same name as that creature. So it actually encourages you to play multiples of the same cards. Uh, we're certainly trying that a little bit, so you can tell, you know, we've got four of Rissona. Uh, one of the, in my opinion, best three drops in the deck because it immediately can get that indestructible in there if the opponent really doesn't have a lot to do. Uh, we also have Rem here. This is going to shut down a lot of the opponent's burn. Uh, and actually, in some cases, I was testing this deck out, and against a mono black deck, they did have uh, deal three, drain three. Uh, which was kind of interesting, um, and it, again, it shut it down completely. Uh, we do have Audric, so Audric's pretty important to the deck. It's only a two of, and I'm kind of reconsidering a little bit, but the idea here uh, is to get a handful of blood tokens, maybe two, maybe three, that smooth out the draws a little bit for you. Uh, you know, there's certainly an opportunity for us to, to add some card draw to the deck, or at least some looting or something like that. I think Fable of the Mirror Breaker might be a good reasonable way to do that, but I wanted to keep with the legendary theme, which is why Audric's in here. We do have Kodama as well here. This is hopefully going to be able to fetch up some of our basic lands. Uh, we don't have too many. I believe it's five in total, uh, but the idea is hopefully if we can get just a couple of those extra lands out, we should be able to start capitalizing on those uh, by playing some of our big legendary creatures, which are the partners and then Jetmir. Uh, Jetmir being kind of the big payoff card for the deck. Uh, we do have Katilda, which also does help ramp us. We've got, I, I, this was truthfully a bit of an odd include, but uh, I noticed, you know, we've got human, we've got human, uh, we've got human, uh, we've got a handful of humans in the deck. And so I was like, yeah, maybe we'll try it. Uh, this also does give us a mana sink as well, which is pretty important because we do kind of peter out a little bit. Again, the card draw is limited, so we want to make sure that we've got something we can do with all of the mana that we hopefully will get out of it. Uh, we do have, also have Gallag Readers, which can help smooth out that mana, gain us some life, throw some 1-1 counters around. Does help with the modified on the uh, Kodama, so it does work pretty well with, you know, throwing some counters on itself and hopefully bolstering that uh, that uh, power toughness. We do have Goro Goro, again, kind of another mana sink for us. It just gives us a way of uh, throwing out some 5-5s five that are huge, powerful, really beefy things. Uh, and then the one drop slot is basically regulated to removal and protection. So we do have Tamiya safekeeping just as a, a safeguarding effort, but 
We do also have March of Otherworldly Light, which can deal with basically any permanent we need other than, I guess, Planeswalkers. So it's artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Kind of a nice little catch-all. Uh, but we also have Strangle, which can, of course, deal with creatures or Planeswalkers. And then Play with Fire, which can deal with basically anything, uh, including just dealing some damage to the opponent just to get that scry off, whatever we need. Uh, so all that to say, this deck is interesting. Uh, there's a lot of thought behind it. I don't think it's necessarily great, uh, but I think it's worth exploring and I think we're going to have some fun with it. So let's jump right in guys. Let's see how we do. Hopefully we can get some wins. We'll see. Let's have some fun. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, a bit of a interesting hand. Any land is actually quite good for us. Um, do we feel like we can do that? I'm going to try it. Um, not super optimistic, but like I said, any land gets us into a position where we can at least throw the commander out or something, and there we go, we got there. Uh, worth noting as well that the indestructible counter on Risona uh, does count as modified, just in case you were not sure, uh, and that does give us the opportunity to kind of um, take advantage of the Kodama here, so I think the play pattern is going to be attack in here. Uh, get that indestructible counter. They may just attack in with the Prosperous Innkeeper. That does get rid of the indestructible counter, so that is worth noting, but this is going to be a fight rigging deck. 100%. Uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, fight rigging is a little scary for sure, uh, but they did not attack. Hmm. A little interesting. Okay. Um,. With that in mind, uh, let's attack and hope that they block. Uh, they did not. Fascinating. Okay, well now I wish I had played the Kodama, but that's fine. Uh, let's see. Whoops. I actually didn't mean to... I meant to put that back in my hand. <laughs> I meant to play the Katilda, but that's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, it would have been nice to have been able to play the Katilda and then gotten rid of that Prosperous Innkeeper, but I think this is fine. Uh, I will take the action. Just get rid of that. Uh, that just keeps the Indestructible counter here. It does still leave up the play of play with fire and attacking here. If they decide they want to block with that, uh, we can actually handle it pretty well. So, um, All right. So the question is, do we go for the Kodama or do we just wait? I think the safe play is still just to wait. Uh, as much as I don't want to. Uh, I'm assuming they've got some amount of kill spells in the deck. This is a, you know, I mean, at this point, a four color deck. I'm assuming potentially more than that. Um, I'm attacking in here because we do need to be aggressive. Uh, let's go ahead and shoot this for two. Uh, and that should get rid of this shakedown heavy, which just means that if they happen to have a fight rigging or something along those lines, they're probably not going to take advantage of it. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Wow. Okay. That's very good uh, and terrifying. Wow. All right. Nice job, opponent. Uh, that's living the dream. Goodness gracious. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, probably going to die. Uh, this deck is sick. Uh, totally thought it was fight rigging. It still might be, but Mystic Reflection was not what I was expecting. Um, I I know about this play, but I've never really seen this play, uh, truthfully. Wow. Yeah. So good. Wow, so good. All right, so we'll decline. Six, nine, and then we'll take action for three. That puts this up, or down to ten, excuse me. It does give them a handful of cards, though. And they're just six fours. I think we just have to good game them. That was really cool. Uh, well done, opponent. I, there's no way we could have fought through that. I mean, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Woo. Yes, theoretically, we could have very easily just like let them draw a million cards, but I think we would just lose. So let's move on to game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, everybody, here we are for game number two. Uh, I actually do like this hand because of the Gallag Readers. Um, and again, we're in the position that we were in before, whereas if we get another land, we should be okay. Uh, and we actually do have the Jet Mirror as well, which is quite good. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we'll we'll try it. 
Um, not overly optimistic by any means, but I think we can reasonably start with two lands and uh, kind of get where we need to be. We do kind of need a white source here, but it is worth noting that the Gallagreeders throws out some of those... Uh, Let's do this. It does throw out the treasure tokens if we need them. Assuming we can get another creature down. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so I think with that in mind, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Not really interested in dealing with that long term. Uh, the throwing the counters around and that kind of stuff gets very difficult. So let's make sure we get that out of there. Oh, interesting. Oh, Extraction Specialist. What a card. Um, I actually really do love Extraction Specialist. I think it's a really good card. And I think it's a bit underutilized uh, because I think it's so powerful. Uh, being able to bring back something so easily is just amazing. Uh, this is probably not going to go our way either, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but that's okay. Yep, I'm not going to block. I'm just going to take it. Uh, okay. So, we can do this. Um, I mean, we can definitely just jet mirror. Uh, alternatively, we can do what? Not a lot? Yeah, I think it's just going to be jet mirror. Uh, as maybe unexciting as this is, I think we kind of have to go this route uh, and just pass here. <coughs> um, but this is definitely not looking good for us. Uh, would love to keep the jet mirror around so we can mirror box and get it up to a 6-5. Um, the reason I threw a counter here is to hopefully stave off some attacks. Uh, yeah. So we can kill this. Do we just kill Adeline? I think we have to, honestly. As much as I really don't want to. They might also just have like a safekeeping or something to keep it uh, on the field, which would be terrible. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, I don't think we can take the 11 going down to 3. Sorry. Yeah, well, we would have blocked here, I suppose. So I, I think this is just necessary. <coughs> um, cool. So at the very least, we got rid of, you know, the big scary Adeline. Um, and they have a Gallagreeders of their own. Very nice. Okay. Um, hmm. So we can certainly Kodama. Uh, we... Let's see. I'm trying to think through what the best options are. Might just be... Hmm. Don't love any of this, to be honest. Uh, we'll go here. Um, do we want treasure token or do we want, I think we'll go here. Um, and we can't really attack. That extraction specialist is scary, man. Look at this. Uh, we can just kill that, I suppose. Like we can double block it. Uh, that also kills the aspirant, which is pretty reasonable. So maybe that's the out. Maybe that's the play. Um, I'm curious because, like, their best play last turn after attacking was just a Gallagreeders, and they're not playing anything pre combat. Uh, which, when you have a Gallagreeders, I would kind of think is important. So, if we do this, they actually can only kill one of these things, if I am correct. Uh, and that's actually not as easy a choice as it might seem. Both of these cards are pretty reasonable to keep on the field, so I'm kind of curious to see where they go with this. Um, Alright, so they're going to kill the commander first, I believe. Interesting. Please don't have anything. Oh, man. Phasing out creatures. Goodness. That's so terrifying. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Let's... I mean, do we just die? <laughs> I think we just die. Um, let me do this. 
Um, so I think if we gain the life, we can potentially stick stick around. Um, I would love to be aggressive here and start grabbing lands from the deck, but I just don't think we can do it. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sick. Um, hmm. So my assumption is they're just going to hit a tackle. Uh, I think that's probably just going to be the play. Uh, which is very good, because that probably just seals the deal. Uh, in terms of them getting enough creatures to kind of just kill us, that's pretty good. <laughs> yep. That Gallag Readers is going to get massive. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. We're going to take four. Look at us. Doing so great. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're just dead, right? So we could do this. Throw a counter out. We can do this, but it... Oh, no, we can't. We can mirror box. All right, I'm in a good game of them here. They definitely have us. Uh, let's go ahead and concede. Let's move on to game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Let's hope for a little better. Uh, I think we will keep this again. We're keeping a lot of two landers. Maybe that's the fault of the deck, uh, or the fault of me, <laughs> uh, is that um, we shouldn't be keeping, excuse me, these two landers, but I think it's worth trying. I don't know, we'll see. Um, not super optimistic. Okay. Uh, I mean, so we actually should wait for the reveal first. So if they happen to reveal something off of this, um, I think that's probably better. Uh, yeah. Oh, they didn't hit anything. Excellent. Works for me. Um, I'm gonna try and play with fire. Uh, if they have a way of saving it, they have a way of saving it. But right now it's just a 1-1, one -one, so I'm not really all that worried about it. <laughs> Uh, they're, like, fighting over this. Do we fight over it? Um, I'm gonna try, actually. Fortunately, we have to get rid of one of these, but I think it's fine. I'd rather really not have to deal with the Delver, to be honest. Um, these are the kinds of decks that hinge on literally just having that one card, if that makes sense. Uh, like, that one creature that they can protect and keep moving forward with, and if they don't have it, I know we're taking a big risk by, like, going all in on killing a Delver. <laughs> um, but, I think it might be worth it. Uh, okay. Interesting. Um, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and Audric here. Uh, we get a couple of blood tokens out of the deal, which I think is worth it. And I will just go ahead and attack if they've got a... A weird pump spell kind of deal, that's fine. Alright, looks like they don't. Um. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, very good. We do have the mirror box play though, so this actually works in... Works out okay in the sense that we can mirror box and still actually get a good attack in if we want. Oh. Uh, does that change the math? Do we actually want to go for that? No, I think we still go for the mirror box play. Um, the partners are very good. Uh, so if they want to kill anything, it's going to have to be Audric and they're going to have to double block. So I think we take this. Uh, yeah. Um, I actually don't know what I want to kill here. Uh, I think it's, I guess, the, the Quandrix Cultivator. The bigger thing, um, the the trick is like this gives them long-term value. So whenever they cast an instant or sorcery, they get a little bit of extra value. So there is some some consideration for saying like, hey, maybe that's the thing we need to kill. Um, so just worth noting, I think it's better to get the Quandrix Cultivator out of there, but it's obviously worth considering that option. Um, I will probably keep the land, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and drop the partners. Uh, I should have played, I guess, the land first, just in case they had, like, a weird Dwari disruption or something strange. But uh, we'll see what they do here. I'm assuming they've got something they can do. Okay. Nice. Uh, that's pretty good. 
Uh, this is still a race at the moment that we win, though, so I'm going to keep moving with the aggressive attacks. Um, sure. I hate the inscription. That's such a good card. Okay. Jetmir. I do like Jetmir. Um, doesn't have haste, though. Uh, so worth noting that it might be worth it just to attack in first. So I'm actually going to do that. Uh, we're gonna leave them with as little information after this uh, with this attack as possible so they may try and get rid of the commander and not the Jetmir. Um, and like very clearly I think Jetmir is a generally better card. Yeah. Um, okay, let's just drop it. Uh, the commander has haste so we can actually just drop this next turn and we've got a pretty reasonable attack here. Um, assuming they can't deal with it. I mean, they very easily could, but it looks like the Cultivator is going to be their play, which is probably not going to be enough to to stop the attack. I mean, certainly we we do have to consider the fact that they can just block, um, but we are going to be threatening lethal, so they do kind of have to block. Uh... Mm, I don't think we take it. That's a little sketchy. Uh, that's a very sketchy attack. I'm not sure what to expect out of that, um, but I think we definitely just don't do anything. Um, let's drop the commander. Uh, let's get the attack in. And hope they can't kill us. Um, anticipating that they've got some way of dealing with this. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's do this. Why did it tap <laughs> the red? The red was not really the ideal tap there, but that's fine. Um, just in case we were to get like a burn spell, you know? Uh, but obviously that's not the case, so it's fine. Alright, uh, now that they want to block the commander, it looks like they do. So, on the plus side... Ah, oh, man! They are just like... They have all these little guys. Uh, that's annoying. That's very annoying. Um, sure. So the question is, do we get rid of the Katilda? Because I think at this point it's not necessarily all that helpful. Um, and I think I will. Beseju. Um, I think I just dropped the Beseju. Ugh, this is tricky. Um, I mean, this is a very annoying deck to be against. Basically, this deck isn't very good. <laughs> I think that's maybe the takeaway. Um... All right, we dropped Jetmir. It's the best we can do, and we're dead. Yep, and they had a fading hope. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, well, uh, that was three straight losses. <laughs> Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys, so a uh, couple of things I want to mention about this. So first and foremost, again, we are missing the Bard class from the deck, and I think we're noticing a pattern, which is without the Bard class, this is a very tricky deck to really make work uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's basically taking away that legend rule as well, so it gives you that ability to play extras, but it cheapens everything up and keeps your deck going. It does all of the things that we didn't get to do in this version of the list because we only have the mirror box uh, and we don't have a way to cheapen mana we don't have a ton of ways to draw cards we did kind of get to see the blood tokens helping out in that third game and we were actually kind of close but they had all the interaction in the world and so you know it happens um as far as the deck goes right now it's i would say quite bad uh, just to be brutally honest, uh, I feel like it tops out very quickly. So maybe it's a situation where we need to find other big top end cards or just ways to draw more cards that we can start flooding. Um, but regardless, it was still a fun little experiment. Uh, that was kind of all this was meant to be anyway. And so for that reason, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me lose for 25 minutes or so. Uh, but it was an absolute blast to try this out, guys. It really is. I, I'm enjoying building decks that are not necessarily good, but just kind of testing a theory. Uh, and in particular, trying to keep to the rotation proof side of things. 
Uh, just so we aren't, you know, showing you guys decks that are not really going to be viable in, you know, a month or whatever. So, uh, less than a month now, goodness. Uh, so, all that to say, guys, I really do appreciate you watching. Don't forget to enter the Dominaria United giveaway. Just make sure you subscribe to the channel. There are other ways to enter. You can view all of that information on our website at ResolvesMTG.com or on our YouTube landing page. There's a video there for you. So, thank you guys again. I really do appreciate it. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you again tomorrow.